two minutes after high noon on the Bridge 99 in Kingston, Jamaica, broadcasting to the diaspora all over the world, linking for the public eye and the open mind. It's 99.13579 on the FM dial. And remember, you can watch our live stream at www.thebridge99fm.com, wherever you are in the world. Follow us on Instagram at the Bridge 99 FM and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bridge 99 FM. Thanks so much for joining us. This is a special kind of radio station and it's a special kind of program on the radio station. I'm Ronnie Thwaites. I've been doing this kind of thing for half a century or more. <laughs> and I'm joined by the Honorable Colonel Charles, the ineffable retired trade unionist, Minister of Government, political activist, and man of the people. Good day to you, sir. And I love that presentation. Really? Political activist uh, and man of the people. Uh, yes. Erin, Erin, I'm sure you will <laughs> endorse that. Right? Well, well, I think we have to tell our listeners that we're in, in, in special territory today because the, only, the one and only championship sports of Jamaican secondary school has attracted interest from all over the world and not least from our friend Erwin Claire, Claire of Ira Jam FM who isn't in New York today but is right here with us. Erwin, greetings and welcome. Well, uh, you know, I am always at home. <laughs> you are. Whether I'm not in the studio, <laughs> yes. I'm always at home because we too in New York, we always like to fashion ourselves that we are in Jamaica, Queens. Okay. So, so we are. We, there is always a Jamaican component. <coughs> well, you're absolutely correct. This time of year, gentlemen, is is a yearly vig vigil for many in the track and field world um, who venture to Jamaica to witness the the third um, longest running athletic event in the world. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Wow. You know, and 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 though Jamaica majors view it as high school championships, and we go out and cheer for our respective schools. There are many Jamaicans in the diaspora and, and friends of Jamaica who are as just as avid fans may not be able to fit in the stadium. The stadium can only <laughs> fit 40,000 or 30,000. 30, yes. But the point is that it has a global following. And, um, and I think it's one of those, those situations that we need to be very proud of. Our young people make us proud every day, gentlemen. That's good. Um, we we'll follow my, it. My big problem is Suppose one of those men had come along and take Bolt or take Packet Racket. I mean, I, I'm worried that when they go, Jamaica lose something, although Jamaica, Jamaicans gain something, but Jamaica lose something. That which, which takes us to the agenda for our program today, doesn't it? Because we're inviting the noted commentator on these matters, man of principle, Dr. Lassels Graham, former Jamaica football captain, who has very definite views on the importation of uh, athletes from one school to another, and therefore, the, as he argues, the prejudice of students in that school to compete and to make the teams. So hold on to that one. And I hope, Erwin, you'll be able to stay with us for that interview oh, yes. too. We're looking forward to that. Good. And early, earlier before that, we're going to connect <coughs> with Dr. Devon Taylor, who is a social justice advocate and environmentalist and a biomedical research mm -hmm. scientist to discuss the privatization of public beaches in Jamaica and the impact of citizens and what the Advocates Network hopes to do All about right. it. Indeed. And at this moment, gentlemen, I just want to welcome our listeners in New York. Ira Jam 93.5 there in the tri-state area and of course streaming live all over the world. We do encourage one to download our app so we can be with you wherever you are. This is Erwin Clare coming to you not from the studios in New York but from the bridge. And I'm and I'm 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 in the distinguished audience I'm in the audience with two distinguished men who have always said and, and, and Ronnie reminded me in the green room that they were calculating the ages, the the, the time they have been in this business and told me to go sit in the corner. So I'm sitting in the corner here in the studio. <laughs> but I just want to say how, 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 how privileged I am to be joining you gentlemen. Yeah. and to say welcome to our listeners in New York and yeah, uh, wherever Ari Jam is. There we, we, we join you in that welcome fulsomely. What we usually do is to engage in a little interchange about local affairs for the benefit of our mm -hmm. diaspora audience. Mm -hmm. I have a question for, for the, the, the senior Charles. 
you're a married man for a long time, right? Yes, for 52 years. God bless you. And and I had breakfast this morning from the same hand. <laughs> well, your boy, I tell you. That's and, just and, the and yeah, actually, yeah. Corinne is asking, yes, we slept together last night. <laughs> <laughs> I did not ask that question. <laughs> it was <laughs> even on my face. Well, I'm, 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 I, have a, I have a question for the, for, for the gentleman. Yes. If you were to ever say something that uh, uh, troubled your wife, yes? That what? Troubled her. Yes, yes. She yes. felt was, was, was not right. Yes. And she, you didn't mean it that way. Yes. But she felt that she was that, that it was something that hurt her. Yes. Uh, you never meant it that way, you know. Yes. What would you do? I would say, "Gee, I am sorry you're hurt." Done. Stop right there, mm-hmm. because that is a that is a lesson that Jamaica and Jamaicans needs to learn. What you have said is an authentic, correct way to approach it. Yes, but but Ronnie, if she believes it. Yeah. And it hurts her. Then you must you must say sorry. You must first accommodate right, her sir. to relieve uh, her right. of her pain, yeah. or and yeah. then you explain what. Yes. Yeah. So no, uh, by parity of reason, help me, Erwin mm. Clare. In Parliament, Dr. Nigel Clark makes a statement, which he doesn't mean what it what people infer it to mean. Yes, but he w- but it's quite clear that people infer it to mean a certain thing. Yes. Yes? So w- the first thing he should do, just like you, is to say, look, I didn't mean it. But if, you, if it has hurt you, I'm sorry. I'm going to take away the hurt. Instead of this torturous, tautologous mm. of no, no, falsehood no, 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 no. of it's saying that I would legitimize what you are thinking if yeah. I were to apologize, Lord mm. have mercy. I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry right, he right, hurt himself right, running, so badly. Running, look at it and hurt way. us too. Look at it this way. Mm-hmm. That um, is the only way to look at it. There is an intellectual situation that comes here of which you are a part. No? Yes. I'm a, I'm, I'm a man of the heart right now. <laughs> you are a man of the heart, but, but you are a man of the head too. Mm-hmm. You and him went to the same big school, America, England. Uh, yeah, but... I, well, I, I, and mm-hmm. he gets back to Parliament uh-huh. and said, you have interpret. Uh-huh. What I have said one way. Uh, right. Now let me tell you what I really Suppose said. Suppose you said that to Miss Gloria when she feel the hurt. No, well, you wouldn't that. stay married you, for fifty-three you, two years. Breakfast, you, so you, you wouldn't get a breakfast. No, 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 man. Let, me, man. Let, let me get there, no man. <laughs> let me get there. The point is this: that there's a difference between the head and the heart. Oh. Gloria, control my heart. Uh-huh. You understand? Yeah. So I can fool you. I can tell you what. But when it comes to the the love uh-huh, so and the warmth. And that reward from a minister, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me ask you, gentlemen, because no, I'm no, not following the story. I under, look, I understand exactly yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, sure. And, and I don't see that it would have made a difference. Would have made a big difference. No, no, no. I don't see it make them make a difference. Let me finish if he, that. if he had said, uh-huh. look, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry that you have yeah, looked at it that yeah, way. Yeah. But let me explain to you what it really yeah. means. And, mm. and yeah. walk and do, do, do what you would have, would have condoned as a spe- when you were a speaker. Go across. Get up. Unbidden. Go across the shake aisle. Yeah. No. Shake my hand. Sit, listen, man. How if, you, if, how you how felt, if you felt I hurt you, I'm sorry. I never uh, meant it that way. But Done. There, finished. But there's something else that can Virtue be done. vindicated. Come on, Erwin Clare. In that situation in uh-huh. Parliament, uh-huh. I think the Speaker has not used something that's available to her. What is that? She can direct yeah. that certain things be removed from the hands out. Yeah. Oh. Right? Uh-huh. And okay, that would be yes. I, I understand what you are. Cool. That, that's, but that's the administrative part. That that's don't it. mean nothing to the guy on the street. Is the moral? No, is, no, 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 no. Wait, wait. It means, I, it means no. What, what I mean to say. What I mean to say is this: being real now, then the message out there has taken on different meanings, and it's going all over the place. And I think we need to stem that. I think that's where I'm getting my argument is coming to. How do you mitigate that? We, I think I've seen where the leader of the opposition has apologized for his statement. Yeah. All right. And and, 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 and so the, the, the fact that the Minister of Finance has con- it seemed to have doubled down, it, it would appear, mm. it, then, it then breeds life into the stories out there that is taking place that they have no control over. Because once it goes out into that open space I have without to, any correction. I have to join you on that because let me tell you, there is no apology or removal 
want to remove what has gone in the street between a white man and this side and a black man. But that is why I have to join with you, yeah, right? Yeah. Good. To uh, say, and I thought you would. We we need to say yes. to our people, look. Mm. Yeah. No, do it this way. Yeah, do it the right way. Do do it, it, I mean, no, there no, do it this way. And, 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 and it's it, it not finish it, you know, right? No, but then you see. Can, so and Erwin is correct. Uh -huh. It will not finish. But it has initiated yeah. something yeah. that was boiling down. No, but wait, I would have expected another thing, Pernell Irwin. I would have expected Prime Minister Andrew Holness to have said to his minister, look, my man, just come out of this one quick time now. And I would, if, 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 uh, if, he, is the, if, he, if he is the gentleman, he, Mr. Holness, that I think he is and that the country needs him to be, I would have said, look here, um, uh, Minister Clark, uh, Member Go uh, Golding, Member Brownberg, <coughs> this is not for us. We are really sorry. We apologize to the country for wasting the time having this yeah, kind of thing. Time. Come with on. Yeah, yeah. And please, let, we're, we're going into a situation of, of constitutional re reform, which demands can ne you can't do one thing with the Constitution unless you get support from both sides. Solid. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. Come down. Yeah. We, we, we're facing, as Prime Minister said this morning, despite the recovery, the economic recovery, we have some hard battles to fight. We have the teachers not happy. We have the, the, but the policemen are grumble. All these things. Come. Come we, come, we show the example. Come, we turn up together. Yes, yeah. Because they're bigger fish and to fry. And we never do that. Yes. Oh, my. That's for Jamaica. And you, and you know what happens there, too? You know what happens now? It, it, the opportunity to build some kind of consensus and, 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 and won't say no, a relationship going forward to the bigger issues. It is now challenged. It is now challenged. You, you use a nice word. Listen, <laughs> when I came yeah. on this program, mm. I said to Ronnie, mm -hmm. I came with a poem that my mother taught me at age four. <laughs> Son, mm -hmm. if your foot slip, mm -hmm. you can regain your balance. Mm -hmm. But if your tongue slip, mm -hmm. you can never recall the word. Mm -hmm. Aye, mm. But when you have the chance to recall the word, even no. if you couldn't take Rani, it back, and, Rani, you, and, and Rani, you say it again, yeah, and you I double it, yeah, you double it. Rani, let me, sh let me show you yeah. why you're not completely big, correct. Big man, if you do that. These things mm -hmm. will never move out. Mm -hmm. Yes, explanation come mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. but in the bar, mm -hmm. In the but, but crowd, I, I know man, still across you. Yeah, I know and, that's and it is because of that. But oh, yeah. why then? Why, but, 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 but because you know the public reaction, and the public reaction has been appalled at this thing. Why do you why, why do you waste your own political capital apart from giving the gift as Mark Golding says that keeps on giving? But Nigel must understand. He, that that his his position up to now is hurting his own political cause. <laughs> yeah, but Nigel sees his intellectual approach better than your your and my political well, grassroots. Well, then that that, so that, he, that could be saying another message there that no, is no, no. not good either. He, he has to, he has to at his standard. Yeah, present his dictionary. Present his wow. different. <laughs> present that. I like that. The dictionary. Okay. Okay. You, you tuna, Rani. Okay. You okay. tuna. No, Mr. Okapi. Okay. It is, when, this, it when, is when, this thing around your neck that, that bring you down to my standard. You know. Oh, to bring you up. Bring me up. Yes. Because, 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 because if you would, if, if we go back to the original simile that yeah. I gave you, yes, that, that you and Miss Gloria, something like that. Yeah. If you pawn in the dictionary and tell her anything, you, you, you're dead. Well, I've been married a year longer than you, you know. No, well, I wouldn't dare do that. The quick time say sorry. <laughs> if you can't say sorry <laughs> ten times a day, you can't manage any relationship. Mm -hmm. Give me so, 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 so heard. Amen. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> but then, <laughs> I, I hope, I hope this... Marry off soon, you know. uh, anyway, moving right along. But <laughs> the, I, I hope this thing, though, is, you know, gets some resolve comes to it. Because, like I said, gentlemen, you know, there, there are too many important things that we need to deal with. <coughs> You're touching something about a constitutional reform committee that was formed. And, and I want to share with you gentlemen and Jamaica and, and to, to reiterate what's coming out of the diaspora on that. I think this is an opportunity. The 14 persons name, I, you know, I have no reason to question that except you know, a military person there. But it was an opportunity, gentlemen, for the inclusion of someone from the diaspora, whether it be England, Canada. Absolutely. 
And I tell you case, why. Case proved. Yeah, and I, and I tell you why. You, you're getting a bird's eye view. Yeah. Number one. But mm -hmm. number two, I dare say that some of the more, more vociferous and strong arguments yeah. for what we need to do here will come from the diaspora. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, it I, should, we should, uh, we should it, it, and it's not a token. You could have found one person yes, who yeah. could really have done this, And they're there. They're I, there. So I, it's not, it's not a, you're right. I feel obliged to say something else. And so. you think that there is a possibility of I, I a, 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 a one choice? Well, bring some. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, oh, no, yes. No, no. One choice is not going to be satisfy take up from everybody. Canada. Yep. Yes, Canada. it shows a diaspora. Yeah. The diaspora, if it, that's for us <coughs> now amongst the diaspora to recognize yeah. that this is diaspora uh, representation. I can think of four or five people yes. who would qualify yes. in any one of them. I have a problem, I must tell you. I, I'm, I'm, being ve I'm going to be as polite as I can. You don't think you should tell me about the problem off here? <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you no. You're on the bridge. <laughs> the co-chairs co of, of that committee are not the right people. First of all, Minister Malahu Fort has repeatedly indicated her distress of, and I could use a stronger word, about the level of civil rights in Jamaica. And uh, Brigadier Mead, who, uh, who personally I have the highest regard for, himself has indicated f how effective he thinks is the circumstances of the state of emergency, which effectively takes away the rights of the people. And that is a position contrary Take to the Constitution. Take away the right of which people? Which All people. people. The, during a state of emergency, a policeman can lock up Colonel Charles Sr., the Honorable Colonel Charles Sr., the Reverend Ronald Thwaites, or Mr. Irwin Clare, without any reason, yes? And but with, at what time take away my right? Yeah? This, at if, what time? Any time. What do you any time you feel like. Know, but you say it takes away the rights of the people. Of course. Those who they take it away. Yes. Not, but the, not, not me. Why not? not? You. Why not you? If if you if you're the last person to say that, because yeah, you, I was I'm just advocate. Okay, hold on. Mine was taken away. Well, yeah. I, but, uh, we don't want that to happen to you again or to me. <laughs> right. This is the public yeah. eye <laughs> and the open mind on the bridge, 99 FM, broadcasting to the world. We soon come. Thanks for being with us on The Bridge 99 FM, The Public Eye, The Global Connection with Erwin Clare, uh, deportee into, ja <laughs> into Jamaica, <laughs> and Colonel Charles and myself. We're waiting on Dr. Devon Taylor, the, the Jamaican-born uh, uh, environmentalist, to talk to. So while we do, I want to congratulate the Minister of Agriculture. He acted quickly. We had a situation where, <clears throat> where we had a crop of onions, onions yes. yes, which were, had no purchase. And uh, he, he he stepped in and he's found a buyer for them, yes. Mm. And he has said there will be no imports while uh, uh, while there's uh, adequate local produce. To understand, Quick yeah. steps, good yes. move. But yes. I understand that what is not bought, mm -hmm. that the government is going to <coughs> buy yeah. and store. Right, which makes sense. Which but, makes but, sense. But, but, but why were we forward thinking on this though? But why, I, why did you even get here? Well, but, that's you know, a problem. You, you know, and 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 I I say that. To say, what about the other crops? Are we looking now to see these yeah. potential situations yeah. so we can put the, the necessary corrective yeah. actions in place and so that we don't go through this? Yeah. Ronnie, 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 has, these opportunities. Ronnie has forced me to ask him a question. Mm. And his answer to the question will come out when, you, when I give you the answer. Mm. We cannot continue to import more <laughs> food than we produce. Yeah, well. And we have to reach a stage. If we overproduce, then the government has to Thank hold you. that. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we export. Yeah. Sure. Well, Pro well, well that's it. But I thought you were going to tell me that you see some world about goat coming out the country last but night. The, but the trouble is, I, I saw it and I'm glad, but I'm going to tell you, it's about the third time I see that kind of thing happen. From I was a goat farmer in the late 70s. They were bringing in Toggenberg and Sun and, and Nubian goats. One one of them around the place. And unfortunately, uh, uh, them same one, you're out the goat. And the thief would push them, catch them. Well, th there's that. And so, kill them so let, let us hope now. Can you imagine what the minister said, which we knew before, that 80% of the curry goat in this country is, is, Im is imported, imported Chevron. What a shame. Yep. So if this is a step in the right direction, and they can really, this time, use it as breeding stock 
to help everybody up the thing. Just as, yes. as the pig industry did about 10 years ago, that would be a great move. And so, I hear more so to they come. are going to hold all the, the, the rams in yes, one place? But and no, you carry your sheep out, go to go get the ram? If wherever the have to do it, so mm -hmm. that, that can take mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. That is a, the right thing to do. When we finish with Dr. Taylor, we'll talk about yes, bauxite indeed. and what the government <laughs> is defending. Uh -huh. Dr. Taylor, good day to you and welcome, welcome to the public eye. Good day, good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. <laughs> where, where you come from, Dr. Taylor? Here, Tom, Sam. Ah, you see what I mean? See what I mean? The best part, uh, by the way, still turned down the beach, you know, but anyway, <laughs> it's the best part. <laughs> That's why the motivation to do what you do, right? <laughs> we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. You're going to fix it. Okay. We're we going to fix it. All of us going to fix it. Indeed, well, indeed. Dr. Indeed. Taylor, graduate of the University of West Indies, City University of, of, of New York. What? And from University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine, ha hailing from Steertown mm -hmm. in St. Anne. What? Social, economic, environmental justice advocate. Happy to have you to bring you home today, Doc. And le let me ask you the question plain and straight. The ordinary Jamaican who wants to, to, to relax at the beach, to go for a swim, where, where, where can he or she go without, when, they, when you don't have a big money in your pocket or you, you're not part of high society? Well, that's the problem, finding that more difficult. You, as I mentioned, I'm from Steertown, and I'm from on the hill in Steertown. I can stand on the hill in Steertown and look down at over two mile of coastline that I don't have access to, mm -hmm. that I used to have access to. So that is an increasing problem in Jamaica. We only have 2.8 um, miles of, of public beach access across the island, and the island is over 493 miles around it. So you know we have a problem when we're really um, in a meeting in this forum discussing the issue. Mm. Um, it is a problem when the prime minister in his budget debate mentioned that you know all Jamaicans should have access without questions. But we have some questions. Why are we still having this problem today? What has changed from when you could 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 have access to the beaches in Ocherius and now that we the ordinary Jamaican cannot? So what really has changed, I think, is we have an entrenchment of an economic model right now. And that economic model is the kind of tourism product that Jamaica is actually um you know, using within its economic growth machinery. And that merely is the all-inclusive tourism product. And that is proliferating across the island. And of course, we're seeing that now, you know, being geared up towards, you know, um, um, St. Thomas and, and Portland. And what that product really does is that once it comes in and a hotel here acquire land, the hotel will run their wire fence and they run their walls and the rights of the citizens is never taken into consideration and that's a government um you know um, weakness in that the government never proactively say that we need to maintain these easement we need to maintain these access for the population and so primarily it is because of privatization and that privatization is the economic model um in villas and hotels and now we're also seeing that you know condominiums are now coming into play so there's a rush on the coast that just intensifies over the years, and that is what leads to the exclusions of Jamaicans from their beaches. Isn't it, a, isn't it the law that you have the right to right. Uh, be on the beach um, or, or traverse the beach up to the high water mark? Is that good? If it is so, is it good enough? No, that, that is never good enough. The, the problem stems from the Beach Control Act of 1956. And what that, that law basically does, that law basically says that no one have any right in or over the foreshore. So all of the rights of the foreshore is vested in the crown. And in order for you to really have access to that, you need permission. And that's what public beaches are. Public beaches are actually permission to the Jamaican people to use the space. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're having an issue there. So when we say, you know what I mean, up to the high water mark, you actually need permission to do so the only person who do not need permission to do so, if you own property that adjoins the ocean, adjoins the sea, then that document gives you the right for you and your friends and your family to really, um, you know, walk along the foreshore, you know, and enjoy that space. But if I will, I want to actually um, read something here that comes directly from the Beach Control Act of 1956. Sure. And what it says is that 
um, the public has no general rights of access to the foreshore except to pass over it for the purpose of navigation or fishing. There is therefore no general right of bathing or to walk along the foreshore except where acquired by customs or prescription, nor is there any general right to fish except what is provided in section three, and that speaks to a fisher folks was used in the space um, pre-1956 when this act came into effect, they can consider to do so. But that is, you know, um, very uh, burdensome because the fisher folks has to go into the courts and have the court recognize their rights through the prescription act of 1882. So this act really did not give Jamaicans the general rights of access. It gives us this conditional rights that we have to get permission you know, I mean, to, to really use um, the, 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 um, the, the beaches. And that's an issue. We want to move to a, a space where we have general rights of access. Dr. Taylor, the, the argument would come from the tourist interests that if, you, if, if, if the law were to be amended in the way that you, you, you propose, that their industry would be dead, that people would invade the beaches of, mm -hmm. of whatever the chains you want to name them, and they would, they would have an inferior product and therefore deny the country the extraordinary uh, source of foreign exchange and tax that that industry. Is that a sacrifice which a Jamaican people can legitimately be asked to to make if it is if indeed it is it, it would be so that's some that's a myth i i will ask um a tourist if they would find it offensive to be on the same beach as a jamaica because that does not happen around the world that is fundamentally discriminated discriminator that violates all international laws so to to really to profess or build a product around exclusion of a people is discriminatory and anyone um, in Jamaica that is upholding that is actually prejudicious and malicious to the Jamaican people and on Jamaica to even really um, to, to use that as, an, uh, as a criteria for the success of an economic model. But we just need to look in Mexico. We need to look in Barbados, Aruba, Cayman, Bahamas. None of these um, 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 you know, conditionality um, really impact their tourism product. So, you know, um, that's not a, a starter for me. Your rights, you know, of the people should not mm -hmm. be curtailed because of any economic model. This is not um, South Africa's, you know, back in the 70s. This is Jamaica in 2023. Well, let me this ask you. Jamaica let um, me ask you, please, because is the situation aggravated? I don't wish to attenuate the argument, but the fact it, that is that the most of the tourists uh, are white and the most of Jamaican people are black. I mean, yes, and while we know that Jamaica is a um, you know post-colonial society, we're seeing aspects of neocolonialism creeping back into um, our into our um, economic space because we have a big rush and coastal property and most of these coastal property are being acquired you know by international chains and 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 you know and and you know folks who may not be sensitive to our yeah. our post-colonial history we are descendants of enslaved africans so this is a sensitive issue in our country and i think this is really going to irreparably damage the soul of the country if we don't fix this what Jamaicans really need, we need a progressive agenda around beach access um, um, rights in the country. And tourism is not um, the end all of our economic problem. In fact, as we know it, the ocean is 75% of the world. And we know that if you properly um, develop a fishing sector, you know, based, of course, in fishing and mariculture, it rivals tourists, it knocks it out of the water, you know what I mean, you know, easily. So we need to really think about these economic models. But as I said, Jamaica is, is kind of like one of the countries that is doing that, and maybe the only one in the Caribbean that has a product like that, that infringes on the rights of the Jamaican people when it comes down to accessing their beaches and use their seas. And that is just not acceptable at all. Doc, uh, share with Taylor. us, share sorry. With us, sorry. That, share with that, us the whole situation about birthright of the beach. I heard that conversation comes up. Does a Jamaican have a birthright to access to the beach? And I heard about the rules going back to 1950. But how, how does that factor in about the actual rights what, of what the What is individual? a birthright? Well, I mean, listen, uh, we have a, 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 you know, national heroes that fought for the soul of the country, 
fought for the land, when Nani and Kojo, you know, wage battle, when Paul Bogle stand up, when Sam Sharp stood up, when George William Gardner stood up, when Marcus Mazaya Garvey stood up, what did they stand up for? They fought for an independence. When you fight for an independence, you win land. When you win land, you win land. So Jamaica as an independent country is independent because our national heroes and many of the unsung heroes fought for it. And by that, then that is our birthright. The land is and beach access is land rights. So you have to walk over land to get to the beach. And if you can't cross over land, you can't get there. We don't have wings to fly. So Dr. therefore, it is our birthright. Dr. Taylor, there's a, at least two things between you and I that are similar. You are from St. <coughs> Anne, and, and you went to the City University of New York. <laughs> I, yes. I, I, I tried the same journey. Let me ask you a question. When Mr. Tweed purchased a piece of land in Ocherios and puts up a hotel and have to provide a beach for those who come to his hotel, and I as a politician said, but Mr. Tweed, what about Claire and his friends who want to go on the beach? Say, no problem. We will extend the beach in such a way that my guests can come to this part of my beach I, your mm. guests go to this part. Similarly, I care for it, clear with it. Why? Because sometimes, without your knowledge, sometimes <coughs> people from your beach comes over to my beach and carry on in such a way that I lose all of my guests. Not only lose the guests, some get hurt, some are get some get stolen from, and. Uh, I must tell you, I have sat in that decision that once you provide beach for local and foreign and keep it at the similar standard, if you want to hold a little piece before your hotel for your guests, I don't have a problem. Is that the middle ground, Dr. Taylor? Well, I think those grounds can be very slippery slopes when we start creating areas for people, you know. I think fundamentally we are a people and we have mechanism in our system that can deal with the, the issue of harassment I mean I think that's what um, you know the um, you know Pernell is saying all right I fundamentally do not think we should need to start doing any kind of segregation I think there are mechanisms and tools that can be put in place all right Jamaica I mean you should have easement and everyone should be able to access this space it happened in Barbados I've traveled Eastern Caribbean I mean, I've traveled Asia, okay? I mean, I've traveled Europe. I don't see areas excluded and set aside, okay? What we do see, though, we know that our society have some social problems, I mean, some economic problems, and it may force individuals to want to go hustle. I think we could have some rangers that really um, move along the coast, and I think those need to come from communities that adjoin um, 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 these these properties, so that they are from the community that will help in the in controlling any kind of um, illegality that may be happening on the beach that may impact you know your relaxation. But I don't think we need to start getting into areas of segregation and exclusion and who has over here and who don't have over there. Listen. In the 70s, growing up in Steertown, we used Taylor. to have copious amount of tourists that come to Steertown. And we used to mingle along these coasts. I can't tell you the number of friends I've met from America and Canada and England on the beaches along Miami Bay. And there was no problem. The problem, I think, started when the all-inclusive start kicking in and start excluding the people. Now, this is actually public research done by um, different um, you know, um, academic groups that shows that there is um, issues of, of, of content, discontent. When you have these exclusive product that locks the people out, it does not, it's not good policy. It's not good practice. Dr. Now, Taylor, let me, let me disturb you and tell you something. I was brought in to make a visible understanding of it. When some of my own people cross from the public side and go into the what I call a private side, selling ganja, terrorizing guests in such a place that some feel they were going to be raped 
and that was one of the presentations that a raping took place. Guests refused to go out there because of who was there. Not all my Jamaican people, you know, but the exploitation of the one or the two that caused that gave me the right to say, once you provide a beach that everybody can go on, if you want to keep the little piece before your tour, what am I to worry about that? Okay, Provided there are people are getting it. That raises two things, though. One is, um, boy, it's a, we reach a pretty bad state if Jamaica people too bad behave for use for them own beach and mix up mm. nice with Not with, all with, of them running, you people. know the one, one. No, I know that. And, and Dr. Okay. Taylor spoke now about ranger, rangers, um, a, a, a kind of to keep the, the good conduct. Yes. That's one. Um, but secondly, the reality now, as I, uh, I'm no expert, but by observation, is that Pernell's solution of having a good public beach and then some private beaches, that is not the reality mm -hmm. that we have now. Because before even Dr. Taylor starts, the, the question now is that he, if he's saying that there's only 2.8 miles of beach <laughs> that's available for the public, it okay. means then that more and more we're losing these beach access. Now, I want to bring some reality to this, uh, br bring a, a situation, an example to this. And, and this, is, this one has now caused me angst. Because you, want to take, you want us to take, take a break? break? Uh, which is scheduled now, and okay, then we'll come sure. right back to that question and to continuation with Dr. Taylor. This is the Public Eye and the Global Connection with Ira Jam on Bridge 99 FM. This is the Public Eye on the Bridge 99 FM, linking with Ira Jam, talking with Dr. Devon Taylor, environmentalist mm -hmm. and public beach rights advocate, Erwin Clare and Pernal Charles, join us on this program. Er Erwin, you're yes. going to tell us a situation sure. to which Dr. Taylor will yeah. reply. Dr. Taylor, and I know you're familiar with this, and I call it Poor People, Duns River, Little Duns River. Um, of course, there was an incident there last year, and I gather that was the the nail in the coffin to close it down. Um, this was a place where, you know, I used to go to on morning times, and I see folks down there, some of the folks down there who arrange to accommodate people coming down. Now, whatever had caused a consternation and there are issues there, the question now says, UDC, it's a UDC-owned property. Urban Development yes. Corporation. Why, why weren't we able to, from a community perspective, Dr. Taylor, from your perspective, able to manage that for our population? Because as you know, that place was catering to the average man on the street, Jamaicans. And even you'll so, have cruise, cruise shippers who would come there as well. No, it is shut down. What have you heard about the plans for that location, sir? Thanks for asking that. Um, before I answer your little Dunstrip question, I want to answer the question regarding, you know, rape and ganja selling and that kind of thing that may not um, sit well. Listen, the people of Jamaica build the tourism product, okay? Rape hasn't been stopped because that has been, um, you know, there's so no more reports of that continuing in hotel. And, and tourists still using ganja. Ganja, if Jamaica had positioned itself around ganja, <laughs> would be the leader in ganja. Yes. And whatever, massive economic industry in terms of that. So those are contributors to our culture, and that's why people come to Jamaica. All right, so, and we should never think about um, any kind of exclusion. We need general rights. Now to Little Guns River. We are in communication with the folks in Little Guns River. Little Dunsborough was a very organized space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you know North Coast during that time, there's a group of Rastafarians who established lion dens here across that space. I mean, and they have that economic model down pat. They feed their families out through that space. And they're pretty organized because I've met with them. Yes, yes. And they're getting even more organized right now. Why we couldn't manage that? I think UDC really uses an excuse to really close the space because let's try that maybe 10 years ago you know and the community um marched you know what i mean and you know through the fraternal order you know to i mean irfm was involved through Cabo, you know what i mean and amber you know along with all of, of the ones then from little duns river they marched and got that place reopened and i think it's an excuse because once you have a you see you call it little duns river because there's a big Duns River that people can't afford. Mm -hmm. And so Little mm -hmm. Duns River is a no-fee space that average Jamaican can really afford. And I have an experience going to big Duns River with my family and seeing tour buses come as far as from Manchester and could not get into big Duns River because they couldn't pay the entrance fee and they had no ID for the discounted fee. So they end up going to Little Duns River. 
It can be done, my brother. The folks there are pretty organized, you know what I mean? And so they are. They have their stuff together. What they need is an opportunity for UDC to come and sit with them and says, okay, here is the space. You manage this space mm -hmm. and give them the necessary guidance exactly. that they, they need. Right. They are trained with TPD. They are licensed. They build their businesses there. And it was very, very draconian for a murder that happened on the side of the road that we're all sensitive to. And it's now seven months and it's been closed. They have written to UDC, they have called UDC, they have talked to the parish council, and nobody is responding to them. Who, who owns the UDC, no gentlemen? Mm -hmm. We're going to find a solution to People this. Of Jamaica. Who owns the, U the Urban Development Corporation? The people of Jamaica. And who is the minister in charge of the, the, the Urban Development Corporation? That is sitting in the office of the Prime Minister. So it is the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And so is the Beach Control Act of 1956, where through the stroke of a pen, the Prime Minister can really sanction um, new, new, new beaches to open up. He can get rid of all these restrictive, um, you know, restriction around customary rights and conditional rights. It all sits in there. And that's why we had a press release last week that we called out the prime minister says, you're being disingenuous when you says all Jamaicans should have the rights of access to beaches. And that, that, that is without that, question. Yeah. But it's questionable because the power sits in your hand to make it right. Dr. Taylor, our behavior as Jamaicans has a lot to do with not only our future, our children, but our country. When you open up a place like that and everybody go and put up them own little shop. Yeah, but but you see, but hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to do that, mm -hmm. Pernell. Mm -hmm. But that's what we have. To, that's what. That's no, why but, they have to close it down. No, yeah, but, I don't think but, so. But I don't go think government so. government manages, for example, the national stadium. Um, and many other facilities yes. with rules, yes. but, yes. but which allow for affordable public access. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I don't think it's beyond us if we want to do that. Yeah, if we're serious about I, it. But, but I don't think if I don't think you can close on uh, um, <clears throat> Don's River. Well, as a little boy, no, 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 when, you never, when you never used to wear uh, beach, I yeah. mean, uh, close, close, the proper close, close you know, yeah. Yeah, but little boy, you might take off them pants and run out but, 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 on the, the beach, but it has reached a standard. Holy power woman do yeah. that on page two of the newspaper. That's right, and in day. Carnival next week. But listen, Dr. Taylor, let, let's go back to another beach now in Priory. What, what 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 do you know about what's taking place with that beach in Priory where on a mon every morning people go down use the beach and they use it as, as a public space what do you know of the plans for that beach sir so so what I know is that TEF tourism enhancement um, you know fund is getting involved with a lot of what they call development of beaches now I think that's the wrong word beaches need conservation and these should actually run through Nepal so what TEF is doing, there is a tourism um, visionary plan to enhance or develop, they said, 10 beaches across Jamaica of high standards, all right? Now, you know, I mean, 10 beaches for 2.7 million people with 2.8 miles of access is the wrong approach. I think what they're doing in Priory is to probably do a similar project that was done in Harmony Cove in Montego Bay. It includes, you know, creating um, all kinds of, you know, you know, concrete, if you will, you know, putting um, courts on the beach and kiosks on the beach and, you know, trying to say that they're making it more commercially friendly, more family friendly, kiddies pool here, kiddies pool there. You know, one of the things that we need to take a step back from is to look at the beach ecosystem. The beach ecosystem is very, very important in terms of climate mitigation. It's important in terms of other life form that uses that space. Birds use it to lay, turtles use it. I mean, there's all kinds of crustacean that lives within that ecosystem. And that's why we need to take away the developmental aspect from this beach management and put it into a conservation space. So it is Nepal, which I would like to see exit the office of the prime minister, exit um, from job um, development and creation and into its own ministry, ministry, because we are living in an era of environmentalism, of climate mitigation, and Nepal needs to be empowered as a standing agency to protect the ecological heritage of Jamaica. We don't need tourism product to manage our beach ecosystem. We need conservation, and that is driving the problem. Is conservation. Because we see beaches as an economic space. 
We have to see it as a living entity. Is conservation, as you as you describe it, compatible with intense use or by the by the public? I think when it's managed by environmentalists, right, there is um, a middle ground that can be struck. And part of what Jabem, and I should introduce Jabem because I'm the president of Jabem, which is a Jamaica Beach Bertrand environmental movement. We are also advocating for rights of nature status. And what is that? You know, for many decades, man has seen himself at the center of planet Earth. You need to take a step back and say, nature is planet Earth. So when we develop, when we manage, when we do all these kind of things, nature must have a right. So conservation can coexist with economic development, but not as how colonialism did it. What colonialism did, as we can see, has destroyed the planet to industrialization without any regards. We see what is happening in, um, in, in Brazil, in the Amazon. If you, and I challenge you, go on Google and take an aerial view on Montego Bay. Take an aerial view on Negril and take an aerial view on Otrius. You would see the decimation of the coast that has taken place. And we are going to have serious fallout from that commercialization. So we'd like to preserve some beaches. We shouldn't even be accessing them. And Nepa would tell us the amount of other biodiverse species that uses them. And we need to really not go there between August and, let's say, you know, um, October, because that's the breeding season for X number of birds. So these are the kind of approach we need to think. And it needs to start in the schools. A lot of this problem, you know, is because of lack of education, as with many other things in our country. And that's why we're saying, because I want to bring this argument right back down to access and the right of access, which should be general. It is true our engagement and our interaction with our environment that we're going to learn the most. We're going to learn how to protect it, because all of my friends, Jeff, Bobby, Ringo, Georgia, you know what I mean? All of my friends, you know, Damian, Nero, all of them from Steertown, we never treated our environment like that. That's we that's... protected it, and that's why the, 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 the roaring river next to Steertown is pristine, because Steertown did not destroy it. That's why Mommy Bay, take a area, look at the Mommy Bay Beach. It is rustic. We did not destroy it. Now come commercialization of all these hotel infrastructures. They rip down all trees, all coconut, all the, everything is done, and they now move into and build it in the sea. Now come on. Dr. Taylor, before you, you leave. Know, it's a tough disaster. We can't do these things. Before you leave, I, I want to satisfy myself that I understand the real problem. Jamaica is sitting on the sea. Right around Jamaica, we have beaches. In other words, Jamaica touched the sea right around, every part. Now, somebody comes in like Mr. X and says, look, I want to put up a hotel here, and I want to get this piece of the beach exclusive for my one and 200 people who comes. I say, well, you can't put up for yourself. You have to put up some for families and friends who want to come. So, oh, no problem. We expand it, and we keep it at the same standard, clean it, see to it that there's no problem. Now, but there's no, that's, not, being, that's what, not happening. No, no, but that was what was supposed to happen. So I'm asking you, like the what is it, what is, I want to find out from Dr. Taylor, what is it that we really want? Do we want to say that John Brown from Tomstroke must get to go to any part of the beach he wants in any hotel? Yeah. In Jamaica, is that what we're saying? Or we can use what has been provided similarly to what is before the hotel, beside the hotel. Except that's hotel. not real. Mm. But you know, you know, the, Mr. Charles, I yes. want to say in the words of Peter Tosh, equal rights and justice. Yeah. What we want is equal rights and justice access. Because the only reason why that I so if if I fly in from Sweden and I'm a Jamaican and I go into that hotel, then I'll have access to that space. But then if I travel from Steertown to that space, then I don't have access to it. I have access to the space next door to it. No. We you, want to have a, you want to have gentlemen, access. But gentlemen, the gentlemen. Uh, you want to have access ge- to the piece before the hotel or the piece beside the hotel. All right. Before you answer, you before, before you, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor, hold, hold a sec. There needs to be an what? exclusion. 
No, no exclusion right. at all. That's the point. Irwin, you're do, saying... Do, yeah, Dr. Taylor, I gotta, we have to break here from the New York link, but obviously it's it's a very important subject Gra- and we hope to, so to have, you, have you on Irish Jam in Glad New York. for Jab so. M and the Advocates Network. Keep up the struggle. We support you. All the best. Dr. Devon Taylor, thanks for today. All right. And yes, I just, just want to wanna say to you, gentlemen, that as we close off the New York link here, thanks very much for accommodating me. Well, and and well. I, I look forward now to a sumptuous lunch. To all my <laughs> no, listeners we, in New York. We, we thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you thank you for coming to us. All right. And you're going to give us lunch. All right. <laughs> All, yes, all the listeners in New York, thanks very much. Stay tuned now for, of course, Mr. Corporate. He now takes over on Irie Jam 93.5 as we remain here in New York as I go to lunch with these gentlemen. <laughs> and as we break on the public eye on the Bridge 99 FM, we soon come back. There's much more to come. Thanks for being with us on the public eye. Grateful to you for joining the Bridge 99 FM, the only radio station that we know of that beams specifically and intentionally for the diaspora all over the world. Talking to Jamaicans, Jamaican lovers, people of Jamaican heritage, people who just just decide to that place is Irie. Yeah, that's who we're talking to. Our telephone numbers are 876-551-5782 and 876-676-4996. Check us on the bridge, 99FM. Well, it's time for champs, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's you a... Th- champs. Yes. Somebody just called me and asked uh-huh. if you the can speak to the PNP uh-huh. and I can speak to the to JLP. The, about what? <laughs> that me and you uh-huh. be a symbol of what they would like to see them. PNP and JLP? Yes. God help us. I would love to do that. They said me and you yeah. mm. okay. is, 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 is the symbol of what they would like to see them. Mm. Well, and look how we quarrel, and look how we get on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we no fight, and we no call each other neither fool nor nor massa. Yes. <laughs> Ronnie, you must not use that right. word because okay. you are sending the wrong signal. All right, all right, there are a right, lot right. of people. That bill tell you, a man, a man, a man said to me that you calling it the pretty word, massa. Them call him Massa. Yes. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, the, uh, the intelligent man who call you, that's correct. But listen, before before we welcome Dr. Lassus Graham to talk about champs and talk about the integrity of schoolboy uh, sports, um, th- this week was a, was, was, was a troubling week for me because Irwin and the Global Connection and otherwise on Irish Jam and Pernell and I have discussed the, the future of the bauxite and aluminum mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a case in court where residents of St. Anne, the parish of both of my colleagues here, yes. to the left and the right, come from. And Dr. Taylor. And Dr. Taylor, <laughs> yes. Who, who people have said, have gone to the court and said, the continued mining in this particular area is prejudicing my natural rights, my peaceful and quiet enjoyment of my property, etc. Yes? I went to a church in your parish recently, a lovely little b- rural church, and when you see how the bulldozer um, uh, 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 surround it, yes, and dig out the land. The picnic can can have peace and can mm-hmm. learn mm-hmm. The, 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 the dust, dust the playground, yeah. everything. The, the peasant life mm-hmm. that both of you s- s- come from, yes, Mrs. Ch- Mrs. Charles, who, who whose aphorisms have supported Pernell's spinal column, his soul, couldn't live in that direction. The, in well, that situation. not only that, but if I knew where yeah. that is, yeah. if I know where it is. Yeah. I definitely would travel there by myself, yeah. and I would raise. Did the, my mother say? My mother would not want to use the word. She said, she said she "Did the cons? Did the cons?" But hear me now, so. <laughs> hear me now. And so, so make sure, Mr. Ronnie. No, that's why we, we have so much hatred in the society. Yeah. So what we do? Because no, we we prevent it from happening. Well, wait, no, no. So the so these people now don't. They're, they're not people who are going to go to the site and lay down before the box, the, the bulldozer. Yes, they go to court and they get an injunction from the court mm-hmm. that says until this issue is tried, there must be no 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 no, no diminution, mining. no continued man. So you are now waiting at the decision of the court. No, but mm-hmm. but, but, but in the mean, into court. but in the meanwhile. Well, well, that is the case. My government, yes, elected to represent the people, comes and pay the freedom lawyer for stand up and say we can't afford to let this stand because we are losing the revenue. And if 
we lose the revenue, we will have to cut taxes. social spending so, or but, increase but, taxes. But, but, or but, increase but, taxes. But, but hold on, Arani. So, so they, hold on, no. They didn't have to tell us that. So the predict if, you're, if you're getting $6 no. billion dollars no. what out of bauxite, hold yes. on, no, man. Yeah, I'll tell if you. If you're getting $6 billion dollars out of bauxite uh -huh. yeah. and that is cut off yeah. and you want to continue the programs yes, are paying the teachers, sure. paying the police, sure. fixing the roads and the bridges. You I'll tell to, you. How are you going to get the money? Borrow it? No, what you're, not at all. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is to seek to uplift, uplift those areas which can be, be, be compensatory. Yes, one. Giving up uh, up yeah. areas that can be mined. No, mm -hmm. but, and not, no, no. Uh, areas that can grow food, areas that can grow f f stuff for export. Okay. Area, and also, very importantly, Ir Irwin Clear, yes? In addition to that, what you have to do is to stop waste and thief. Yes, wherever it takes place, and you can Cut replace you can replace that money. And if you tell me that you have that, I have to ban my belly a little more, tough as it is, in order to prevent the rip, the long time, eternal, un, 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 unavoidable, and unrepairable waste of the of the hinterland of Saint Anne, you know, the I, Jamaican you know, people yeah, ought, yeah. To, wait, ought to have this. But when the government <coughs> protector of the people goes in and say. You know what, court? Please remove this injunction. Make the bulldozer roll. Let them dig out the place and do it like all the But it is the government who's doing it. But the government, hold on. The government is a contractor. The government is the owner. It's the government, government, government is a contractor. The government, the government is a the contractor hey, with, the, hey, with the foreigners. Hey, it is the government who has given them hey, authority to mine the so right? that the country can get funds to pay teachers, that, pay doctors, no, no, pay this, pay no, that. But gentlemen, or, but, but gentlemen. Or go uh, some uh, other place uh, and borrow it. But according to no. what the article said, you know, is that the, the shortfall from that yeah. box at mining would would impact one of two things. Capital. They'd either have to cut back on some of the social programs, mm -hmm. all yes. right, or increase taxes. Yes. So I what you do now, that is a choice that Jamaicans have to make. You, we, we wreck your household, yes, or we, 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 we give you a measure of social service. That is a choice in the, in the, in the 61st year. No, 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 what they didn't say. The best thing. Yeah, but what they also didn't say. Oh, my God. They did not factor in, though. They did not quotes. factor in. They did not factor in the, the, the impact it has on the health concerns of the individuals. No, no. All right? And number two, as you said, they didn't factor in what other areas mm -hmm. can we now improve on for mm -hmm. that shortfall. Instead, they gave the two examples of, yeah. that, of course, would give it the more shock. Yeah. Scenario. Wow. I don't because I don't want to pay more taxes. I don't want to pay more taxes. And I don't, don't want to lose power. There you go. There and you go. Make them, make them, now make you them, have a chance. You want Ronnie. Go make them go dig no, 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 no. You want oh Ronnie God. has a chance. Wicked. And you want Ronnie has a chance to say it to me. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Give us two areas mm -hmm. yes, sir. that you think in short term you could provide even fifty percent sure. of the six billion dollars they need sure. to to continue the sure. work mm -hmm. as set out for poor people. For roads, uh, well, for I, I, I tell you, right, go ahead, Erwin. You tell from what I understand, first. right? We have a very aggressive approach in paying down our debt. There are arguments to say that maybe we can slow it down somewhat and accommodate some social services back to our communities, whilst at the same time monetizing it, making it in such a way that it, cre it, it provides more, 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 more resources for the creative industries. So it's not, a, it's not a matter of giving you a part situation just for consumption, but giving you the tool to go out and fish. I am not. I am not. All right. Not, That's number one. And I'm number not, two is remember, about the whole situation of corruption. You want you, but but I'm 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 arguing. I'm arguing for the minister of agriculture yeah. because if the minister of agriculture were funded properly mm. and were given the the, yeah. the other requisite tools, yeah. I believe we can that the, the, food the bauxite import. lands, the bauxite lands can be used in mm -hmm. such a way that we could cut our, Im, our imports and therefore save foreign exchange, saving foreign exchanges. And create is, employment yes, in the process. Create, create employment, much more employment than the bauxite company does, yes. And thirdly, feed ourselves. That's one area. Secondly, I am of the firm opinion uh, and that, that there, is, there is slack in the budget. Yes, mm -hmm. which would allow for, that, for not a lot us of money. to save in order to be able to with to 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 to, to take the the hit of the depressed lost, uh, mining earnings. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'm strongly believe, and even even if I am wrong, certainly that 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 
that equation ought to be put before the people, ought to be discussed, rather than to empower the lawyers of the government to go and to say that, like the doctors of old, who said, we have to let out your blood in order that you will become healthy. Mm -hmm. And what happened to the patient? Well, what, the doctor, what, the do what the doctor does... That is the sect effectively no, 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 what we're doing. The no, government no, is doing no, to no, us but now. No, no, right. a set of wicked When the doctor people. comes and says, we have to let out your blood, so yeah. they say, we have to let out that blood and put in this blood. No, they never did that. No, 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 no. <laughs> they cannot let out the blood and don't put in blood. No, but they said, no. No, 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 let's leave with that no, point. No, no, In modern medicine, that is true. In, in, in modern old, medicine, in the in old me all no, medicine, no, if you take out the bad blood out of no, a man sorry, and Dahl, don't put in good I'm, blood, I'm giving, in bed. I'm giving, that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what's going to happen to the culture and people of St. Anne. No, 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 they're putting in, they're putting put in, in what? putting in good blood. Putting in what? But, but, but couple but, scholarships and... Rani, and, you and I agree before Erwin come here one of the bad things no with more mining. One, of, one, of, one of the bad things with mining is that it has never followed the contract as set out. And, and, it's, and it's not going to know. Nobody even they have never that. even and so, took back so, the so, top soil. Yes, sir. So the case in the case that's being fought in the courts now. Yes. Listen, Diaspora. The case that is being fought in the courts. If the government came and said, you know what, we really need the money, but this time we are going to give you assurances, solemn assurances in the court, that we will restore the land to the required degree. Then and therefore, have please move the injunction. Have mm. they said that? No, they Absolutely have. not. But what they do is try and frighten the people to their own destruction Indeed. by saying, if you no do, if you no make we do this, then we, we, we're going to tax back you in. or cut back your food. But listen to this. Oh According to the Glean article, the bauxite companies hit back that the judge's order ignored a number of positives which would have been expected from the mining agreement, including projected tax collection inclusive of uh -huh. bauxite production levy and royalties for the financial year 2020 to 2023 of approximately $35 million. Hello? <laughs> $35 million? That's a total we're talking about here. That's the impact on the budget. And then no, the impact no, on the no. budget, the impact on the budget going Hello. forth. Man for cannot live by bread alone, <laughs> but by every word that cometh from the mouth of God. <laughs> That's what I said it again. <laughs> In Putanim <laughs> College just now. Pastor said it again. Mm. <laughs> what we're doing is saying, look here, the money is a key thing. No matter yeah. who, how no, we no, mash no, no, up no. the place, that's no matter what, what, what you do to the people. With respect, that's not what the government is what saying. Is saying what the government is saying, for us to continue to develop a system that our people survive. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you need money to develop a system. Mm -hmm. You have to earn it. And you have to dig up the place to do that? No, Rani, you know that long time. Let me repeat one thing that you... you I know your I, position, I, I am Charles. not opposed. I'm not opposing to mining. No. What I'm opposing to is the kind of way they have done mm. the mining. But, 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 Up to now, if you go back to Moko, the bumps of, so, of, of, yeah. of so, things... So what there. confidence do you have? Same time, that they'll do, that they'll do exactly you what you said. Any they do intend to, and the government has no intention of forcing them to. And that is really, Rani, and that you, is you, you can get my vote without... Thank you. Without, without, uh, without, <laughs> without even I, I calling think, for it. If Dr. you're Graham going to done. continue yeah. to yeah. do exactly. this, leave the holes... Hole right there. That if I go for a long neck break him neck. and leave the good soil yeah. on the top Diaspora. without level it out, you are not Come going in. to have my vote. <laughs> Rope no mind in the public We take a no break mind. No mind on in. the public eye with the open mind with Honorable Pernell Charles and Erwin Clare, environmental activists. We soon come back. Thanks for being with us on The Public Eye. This is a Bridge 99 FM. Erwin Clare of Ira Jam is with us, and the Honorable Colonel Charles is a co-host of this program. Lassels Moggy Graham, good day, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Ronnie, and all the others. Thank you. Lassels Graham, former uh, Jamaica STG St. George's Man and Cup All Schools football uh, player and captain, chemist of, of renown, is one of the strong advocates about importation of students from one school to another for athletic purposes only. 
Champs is going on, Moggy Graham. What is the situation of the teams at Champs, if you have any idea, if you know at all? I think I heard Mr. Wellington, who is mm -hmm. a respected leader of that uh, uh, Interschools Association, mm -hmm. say, yes, saying that, um, uh, uh, what was the figure he, he gave Erwin? Was it 100 or 1,000 um, uh, of students from outside the country? 100, he said, mm -hmm. and um, are coming to, to so participate in our, in our Champs. Uh, what's the problem there? Is that actually happening as far as you know, Moggy Graham? Yes, this has been happening for a while. Um, <clears throat> I, I I don't think it's a good thing. Um, but first of all, let me say thanks for having me. Pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here, although uh, with such awesome political company, I'm a little <laughs> nervous about saying, saying something that is considered... <laughs> Politically incorrect. When you're afraid of politics, <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's I would, I would ask that you know, if this should happen, that you you be understanding and forgiving. Thing that you know, I'm not a political animal. However, um, I must say though, uh, Ronnie Pernell and Erwin, uh, Erwin, that I am saddened, I'm disappointed, I'm <clears throat> disgusted, I'm upset, and you could say angry even, at how our governments, and I, I say this decidedly, governments, PNP, JLP, have treated with education and socialization in our schools, you know, and have allowed the role of sports in our schools to be undermined, corrupted, <coughs> I, I think at the core of it is the rabid, unbridled capitalist marketplace. Money essentially determining just about everything. You know, I, I think that our governments have allowed um, our specialized educational institutions, and I stress that, up to the high school level, which is basic education, to become entrapped in what um, an American uh, law journal called <clears throat> the Iron Triangle of television, recruiting, and the economic pressure to win. And hence, sports in our schools have spiraled out of control, you know, in, into this intensely competitive counterproductive situation we have today where our specialized educational institutions are recruiting foreigners based on sports ability you mm. know as far as i'm concerned it's a race to the bottom why because isn't sports good for for students and if if you can if you can spice up your team with some foreign talent from another school uh, or from abroad um, wh what is the what is the, the principal objection that you that you make? All right, um, it is this. First of all, I think we need to understand that um, our schools are failing, essentially. Um, also, that you don't have to have sports or extracurricular activities, for that matter, in schools to have people excel academically technically, vocationally, okay? So, and, and countries, there are templates all over the world where countries have done it without sports. There is a... But building mm -hmm. character, building character sports is and essential. Well, I am saying to you that even to build character, you don't need sports. No. It, it, is, it is helpful, <laughs> and it, 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 it can be a big help, but people have built Sterling character. Okay, you can pass exams uh, without being without playing any sports. Okay, take your yes, point. So but what then I'm no, saying what is this: what I'm saying is this, Ronnie, that you don't need sports in school to be a rounded person. Okay, the fact though is that certain countries and countries have done it without without you said that. curricular activity. <laughs> But certain countries decide that, okay, mm -hmm. it would be helpful, and I fully agree with that. You are the, you are the, you are the product of that. Right. You know, 
it would be helpful to, and I think sports in particular can be a powerful change agent yeah, so and socializing agent. So but the, the, it, must, it must be fit for purpose. It would be helpful to have extracurricular activities because it's not just sports, music and what have you, of and your whatever. But uh, sports we're talking about. So it would be helpful to have things like sports to help to, to, to get arrive at this uh, balance, this holistic um, person. But isn't it good, uh, Morgan Graham, that, the, that the, the young people of Jamaica can, over this weekend, for example, participate in what Erwin Clare reminds us is the third oldest yeah. a, uh, athletic uh, competition um, anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. isn't, isn't that good for them? Um, Excellent. But, but guess what? I, I many people don't know this. I represented St. George's College at Champs Hill. Okay. And guess what? Um, mm. We never had the, the sort of um, heavy recruiting that we have now for, at Champs Hill. Yeah, but, but, but I, would not, I would not have gone to Champs. Yeah. I would not perhaps have played football either if this heavy recruiting were in place when I was in school, you know. Because I never started out as a any big gun. Mm -hmm. So what but you're saying is that the, right. the, the, in the, other words, the imports force out ordinary people? Because what happens is this, that the people, it should be that you, you have, well, we say that publicly that um, there are certain protocols to getting to, to various schools. And then, um, having gotten to those schools, what it should be is that um, we then have the school doing all it can to assist in the development of our future adult citizens. In other words, um, sports is there for the student who is at the school, whether he's a nerd or he's a big gun ball but, or, but runner, doctor, or whatever. But, but Dr. Graham. Okay, okay, let me ask you one question. <laughs> yes. Please, just listen to me. I know a lady is in the, the country. Is this the Pernell? The yes, Mr. Pernell, sir. I okay. know a lady in the country mm -hmm. who has a, a little boy at a country school. Let me say, the boy born a football man. He can touch him head and touch him foot. And, and some man from one of the big schools in Kingston saw this little boy in the field and said, Boy, watch him. He's going to be a big boy in him. Went to the mother. Mother no no food. Him live without good clothes. Him go to school no one again. Him say, listen, we will take a little guy to a school in town and we'll board him. We'll make sure he goes to school every day. He has proper clothes and he's going to be a footballer. He <laughs> take the boy from country and the boy come to town. And the boy is like, a man, you know my name, Moggy Graham? You know him? Mm. This little boy up in the hill who used to be barefoot, kicking rock stone like me, right? Is now a first. You are telling me that we're a boy show sign in a country and Not there's the no opportunity for him. And a man from KC or BC or St. Yeah. come and see him and say, I want to help this boy straight to the top. Yeah. And go to his place and can come at home. You are telling me if he say, no, sir. The prophet is still country. What man, this man, where you come from? All right. May I answer? Yes, yes please, please do. Okay. okay. Let, me, let me sum it up because that's a, long, that's a long thing. Let me sum it up by saying this. You know a guy called Usain Bolt? Mm. Yeah, man. Right. Come well, chill out those there, those leave. fools that you are talking about offered to do the, just what you said for him, you know, because guess what? Coming from a little country place with unknown, nothing. Yes. And we, the great schools in the Kingston area and so on, can, or wherever, can make you be a great big gun. Guess what happened? Because lucky for you, saying he had a good family structure. Yes. They said no way, and he's st 
say that little William Nib and the made history. William Nib much bigger. All right? So it, it happens all the while. But what, the other thing I want to say is this. And guess what? <laughs> because he stayed at William Nib, of course, the, the, the teams you mentioned, the schools you mentioned before, had he come to town, we'd be taking all the credit for you. See what we did and why we have to get them from the country and do the most for them. And from Ghana and, and from St. Lucia. But, 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 and, Saint, and from St. Lucia and yeah. Africa and everywhere else. Yeah. But listen, apart from that, you know what Usain Bull staying at William Nib has done for William Nib and has done for the community down there? So, so, eh? so Dr. Graham, Dr. Uh -huh. Graham, I, I, this is Erwin Claire. So, so yes. it's, it's basically then, because you're, you're, I'm trying to understand what you're against here. It's primarily the whole situation of where um, uh, of schools being raided for the corporate because basically you know, it's probably three or four schools who really indulge in those activities really only that uh, you know, the major the ma no, let, let, me, let, me, let me finish your, don't let, put your head up. let me finish don't let me finish let me finish let me, fin let me finish let me finish it can be more than 10 schools what i am no, saying no, what no, I'm, no. Well, let me finish i listen All to right. you keenly okay, sorry, because my, i my don't apology. agree i don't agree that uh, your 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 how you explain the, the role of sports in our institutions because i also would like to share with you from the society where i'm in and i think this is a model that jamaica should look at there are countries who recognize jamaica's sports program here in its schools and wish to send their children here. Are we saying we they should not accept them? Uh, no, but I'm saying, are we saying we should not accept them? No, you shouldn't right. accept them on that basis alone. No, no, but it's a scholarship. Okay, Pe wait, it's Kids fine. get scholarship. We have kids here in Jamaica yeah. who have the potential for football who get scholarship to go to other schools. You know, it happens. You know, at, at, at this we level. Have, we have at, families I'm, in... I'm even with prep schools. No, no. Have well, I don't accept that. No, but it's ha ha it's happening. It's happening. Yeah, but you can tell me it's happening. I, I, I don't agree I'm with just it. Because what it does is to exclude people. No, it doesn't exclude. Of course it does. No, it doesn't. If sir. I, I no, couldn't, I couldn't, f I couldn't fit on a team in yes. a particular area because they brought in no, somebody but, else no, but what from I'm abroad. Yeah, Why? No, but we, our kids are going overseas to for school. No, no. So, in so because academies. everybody do it is okay. No, and I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about. You are. I'm saying about the reality of the city. No, no. How do we manage it? How do we manage it? How do we manage it? You know what we, what I feel, and yes. I'm agreeing with with Lassus Graham, yeah. is that a, a person who has talent yes. must be able to 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 execute that talent. But they, they, and sports, I believe more so than he has said, has a tremendous role in extracurricular activities to build character. Mm -hmm. But that cannot be the only aspect of it. No, no, no. But they have to. They, there has to be academic. The academic. Yes, and, I agree. No, but I agree. That, but, but, no, 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 no. But you're, the, you're agreeing like how Pernell agrees to, no, no, to but, restore bauxite land. It but, doesn't. But, <laughs> but let me explain something else to you again. There are schools who do not have the sports apparatus. So if we have all the schools... So why not? I, that's up to our system here. Absolutely and so. then there are schools that specialize in science. There are schools that specialize in mathematics. I wish they were. All right? And then there are schools who specialize in sports. Mm. That's how the world seems to be accepting okay. and dealing with these you youngsters. Have, but you here in Jamaica... But you here, have a sports academy. Yes. Yes, I understand what you're doing. If yes. you have GC Foster, right? That's just, fine. That's fine. Yes, yes, but that's not KCJC George's. But there's a you know there's a sports academy in Saint Anne. Yeah, so have, have one. Right. Have one there. That's yes. fine. Yes. That 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 can, is that so is a I'm specific thing. Can I, yes, but can that I, is that can is, I intervene? It's mm? a, some of the schools in Kingston, <laughs> some of the parents in Kingston, are sending some of their children to country schools. Yes, hold on. I know that. Hold on. It's not only sports, not only football. Academics. Some of the country schools yeah. that they run it, Toyota and others. No case is one of them. And St. Helens. Put country school yes. can no, answer no. the questions and can do this. Yes. That Kingston people who can't get into no, care that, that, send them picnic go all the way. No, what's the point? No. That at the point that they're making is that uh, it's not only sports yeah. that children are moving from school to school to develop. Right? No. And that it is to me, I don't have no, I have no objection I, you know what I because do. it's not only the football. Yeah. When you leave, you get better clothes, yeah. better teaching, well, it, better understanding. I tell you, man cannot live by bread alone. But what I what what my philosophy is yes. the one that I hear from the Mr. Mary, the mm -hmm. principal of Kingston College, mm -hmm. which I hope he not only says but 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 uh, observes that Kingston College 
is is a school. It's not a sports school. True. It is a school where sports are played. Yes. 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 I accept that. True. I yeah. agree with that. But that's not what's happening. But but I when know you br- when you bring in people on the basis that they can run fast. And that's what schools, some schools in the, especially the corporate areas. And, I, and I'm, a, and I'm I agree, fundamentally and, uh, against it. I agree with that point. But your guy going on like his forty people. It's three or four. No, no man. No, I'm sorry. Run, run, uh, you're not a school that like carries more six people. But, but <laughs> yes. I, I know that the aggregate situation <laughs> is creating <laughs> creating a numbers now, yes. and it is creating in the minds of people that, that you must win at all. Costs. Well, you must win at all. Yeah, man, at all okay. costs. But, but Mr. Graham, go sorry, ahead. Go, but, you're, you're, you're the guest, Moggy Graham, but, not m- me. But Moggy will tell you now that, he, and he was on the field. Every man who go out there to wait for the gun to fire, uh-huh. he must win yeah. at all costs. You, with his stomach, you, you his be, breath, yeah. his no, muscle. No, you must try. No, <laughs> no, what, you must. No, I'm going to You must body. try your hardest. Mm. Yes. Not, that is very different from winning well, at all. Well, costs. No, fint, no, no, no. But, but going okay. back to Mr. Graham, though. Okay. That's why they have doctors out there for picking them up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, may I? Yes, may go I ahead, just, Mr. Graham. Well, okay, come and help us in this. You go, yes. Boggy. Just to say, let me, let me just say what, how I see it, okay? Um, I see our schools, and first of all, we should be offering quality education. Yes. Um, in all our schools, in every nook and cranny in Jamaica, you should be able to go to a school that is in your area and get top grade quality education. Well rounded. The top grade yes. quality education. That's not pers- yes. possible overnight. <laughs> you want no. at least a few days. Hold on. Um, this is not the really? case. This is not the reality, no. Right. In other words... It will never be if we continue this way. In other, what, what is the case is that you have a few schools that do offer this quality education. And hence, we have set up a system which says there is a certain protocol for you to follow to get into these schools because everybody essentially want to get into these schools but these schools have limited space that yes, right. everybody can't get in so um my approach would be that okay we cannot offer quality education everywhere we want to be as efficient as possible while we endeavor to um the other schools for giving this quality education. We want to be as efficient and effective as possible, and hence, we want to ensure that the students who are best prepared to deal with this quality education and to come back and help the country because of what they have imbibed, get the chance for this quality education. So we have set up a protocol to try and ensure that. All right? My f- hence, my feeling is that we should allow this protocol to, um, to, to have effect. We should not be short-circuiting it, and we should not be having double standards. And hence, I am saying to you, it makes no sense to my mind taking youngsters into these top schools, if you may call them that, where a youngster is the greatest baller Mm and the greatest runner, Mm -hmm. but he believes that one plus one is two, (laughs) is is 11, (laughs) all right? If he believes one plus one is 11, it's a waste of time sending him to these schools that have the best physics lab, the best physics teacher, the best um, chemistry lab, and what have you. Okay? But the the best school help the children. They so, don't just so, take them in. They don't just take them in. They take so, them in. They get them better place to live, better so, clothes, and better me, no, uh, uh, overall uh, training. Well, I may, I, may I just finish? Huh? I wish may I finish? So. Yeah, go ahead, go Dr. Ahead. Yes. 
So I am saying it seems to me to be a much more efficient um, system if we do it that way. Having brought these children, and a lot of them are coming from the so-called ghetto. They have had to struggle with six, seven, whatever number of people in a room. They have had to um, study on the street lights, etc., etc. That would be trauma of having parents or relatives shot in front of them. Right. Keep out of gangs, etc. And they have struggled and gotten to these better schools. But, and they, I think, there, the better schools, should offer them all they can in terms of everything, including extracurricular but, activities, uh, to um, better themselves, to find themselves, to develop themselves. Yes. Okay? You would still have charms, you would still have whatever else. Yes. Uh-huh. But they would know that they could get the chance which they have earned yes. to represent their school yes. and to learn through socialization by these different um, extracurricular we have to We have to take a short break, Moggy mm-hmm. Graham. We have to change our education system from yeah. being a damn Definitely. cattle market. Mm-hmm. We'll soon come back. This is The Public Eye on the Bridge 99 FM. Coming down on the public eye on the bridge, 99 FM. We're talking champs. We're talking about one uh, students being moved from one school to the other because they can run or they can play football. Moggy Graham, well-known commentator on this matter, talking with Erwin Clare and Pernell Charles and, and, and myself. In the break, Moggy Graham, um, Erwin Clare spoke a great truth. He said, champs is for the town schools with plenty of money. He was saying about the millions of dollars that, uh, that, that, that uh, one particular school, which I received respect so much I won't call their name is, is, uh, uh, Moggy, Moggy, is, one, one is school spending. I know one school I know won't win champs gentlemen yeah. is your, ca- your castle oh. <laughs> in centre well. they won't be winning champs why <laughs> we don't spend that kind of money you don't spend that kind of money okay For why that. why you don't spend that kind because of money because we don't have those kind of resources that the schools that are funding these things right. have a strong old boy uh, old and girl is that the way the money is that the way the best way the money use, they, be? they use it as a means to uh-huh. even make more money for the rest right. of the school well, because they're yeah. bringing in so other so sorts of when you look at sports when you look at when you look at inclusivity in the society mm-hmm. when you when you think of of trying to correct some of the yawning mm-hmm. irremediable mm-hmm. gaps mm-hmm. in between school and school if they are parted in the education system as peter phillips was wont to say yes uh, is this helping or hurting? Well, <laughs> most of these children who go to the, 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 the big thing that they ask for a sponsor in America, for little fair, we call it. Pen release? Yeah, yeah. pen release. And they, uh, when, they, when they finish, don't they go on to university? No, not all. So, so, some some well, scholarship. No, but, but I, have no, I have no difficulty with pen release. It's a wonderful thing. You've, you've, you've made yeah, huge yeah. contributions yeah. toward it yourself. But that's a, that's a platform for folks <coughs> to get scholarships. It is. And, and, and another avenue. Okay, say. that's it. I want the platform to be, a, 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 to be bro- I, broadly yeah. across the, the stage. Yes, Moggy? Yes, just to say that, you know, this is, well, first of all, um, schools recruit based on sports ability for one reason, to win at all costs. That's the only reason. All the other arguments about helping this and doing that are just rationalizing, trying to justify, trying to cover up that motive. And I want to say this, that, you know, um, it has been said through the years that, you know, with so much, so many scholarships that these people get. uh, Look here, I want you to look at the number of people who go to champs every year and the number who get scholarships. There was um, the Minister of Education, the schools were saying the same thing. The Minister of Education said, okay, let us put some, confirm all these good things that are coming out as um, recruiting for sports. So let us get a third party to, to, to examine the book, do the research. We don't, we don't need it. 
And the fact is that it, it is a very limited number who so benefit. Yeah, but I'm just saying, running so that people can understand, yeah, because many people don't so, know. So it is... When, it, when, the, when the Minister of Education did mm-hmm. this and sent out the third party, after the schools had agreed that, yes, we would open our books and show how many um, scholarships relative to the number of recruits and so on, the, the third party had to give up in frustration after three months because the schools who are doing all these great things refuse to open their books. So you tell me now, um, all of a sudden everybody gets so humble? No, but all of a sudden you find out that if you take Miss Birdie Pitney from Lime Tree Garden, Became can kick football and can come to one of the big school in town. You not only have him for kick football, you have to give him good clothes, good place, and you have to teach him to read and write, mm-hmm. teach him maths. Mm-hmm. When no, he goes, when he Mr. Mr. On. Mr. Chuck, guys, I some want some to know, know if some you're doing the... such good, why not let it show? Well, hold on, I, you 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 show have a, you have a better eye inside of the mirror to see. But my understanding is that. You don't only take the guy from the entry garden for kicking football. You give him a place to live, you give him proper books to go to school, proper clothes, and you see to it that he gets a good academic background. Yeah. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Charles, let me tell if you If you're not again, doing that, that's a, you're not helping him. Uh, that's a Mr. point. Mr. Charles, let me tell you again, you see? Yes. Because again, many people feel like you, especially people in the diaspora and so on. It's a myth. When you look at, look, just look at the odds. This overemphasis that sports, you see, on sports, leading our children down a dead end street. When you, there, there was a, I think Charles Barkley in one of his things says similar thing. And there was another big NBA uh, person who is now a consultant who, who, who pointed out that of a million boys who want to play the NBA, in the NBA. Yeah. Uh-huh. Only seven make it. But time out, time out, time out, time out, time uh-huh. out. How many, it's the same as me saying how many persons win the 100 meters or gold medals and stuff. But, That's sport, right. but sports is beyond that. It's the largest industry in the world. There are many yeah, careers we, that's no wait up, wait up, that spin off from it. No, what so, does that justify? No, it's not a, it justifies a lot. The opportunities that somebody has sports. I know of a young lady who wasn't a great athlete in school, but she used a platform. Today, she's a PhD. As a matter of fact, we interviewed no, her that's here. No problem. I'm just saying, though, that we have to make sure that we understand the role that sports play. And I think we are seeing a lot of the negativity, here, especially during champs, because, yes, people are recruiting folks just to win. Well, let me but, but the industrial well, sports... Well, acknowledgement. The industrial... Yes, I acknowledge that. But the industrial sports is bigger than that. Mr. Clear. Yes, could sir. Could I say this to you? Yes, um, that I am not against sports. No, but the way you're the I, argument. I, I, no, no, I, no, no, a, no. I have been a sportsman yes, all my life. I know, and that's why it's yes, right. And that's I'm why it's right. You you see, some of your what I am against. Let me yes. just tell you what yes. I'm against. Okay. So we don't have much time. Yes, go ahead. I am against our specialized educational institution, our public specialized educational institution up to high school level, mm-hmm. which is basic education, mm-hmm. bringing in people... Their recruitment policies. Th- bringing in people based on sports ability. Okay. That All is right. what okay. I'm against. Okay. Why are, you, why, are, why are you against that? Well, that's and what that is been what gives the children an opportunity for education. Well, if okay. they cannot play sports yeah. in Gibraltar, no. they're not can going I, get can a I chance tell you why I'm against it? Yes. Uh-huh. One I later. am against it because there are a number of ills associated with it. I pointed out to yeah. you, I think, yeah, already yeah, once. You don't yeah. need to go over them. Yeah. R- right. So, well, don't go over the ills. Well, mm-hmm. you can go over uh, pitily, quickly. Yeah, just, um, you know, it crowds out the people in the school who have earned their place mm-hmm. and earned their... Undoubtedly. Uh, to, 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 ...to represent the school. Yeah. It, it also prevents others who would have made it to the school from coming because the school has only a limited number of people that it can take. Mm -hmm. All right? And also, you find that it, uh, along with, with, with that, 
you find also that um, the it emph- over emphasizes sports in our schools. For sports in our schools to be fit for purpose, it must be focused on socializing the children who make it to the school. And, and you don't have to recruit to do that. You have enough children who have sacrificed to be there who deserve to have it. What it must be... I disagree with you. I disagree, I disagree is, with you. Is, what what, what it must be <laughs> no. is that uh, for schools to be a proper socializing agent in school, we must have the motto that um, it is not whether you win or lose. It is how you play the game. game. On that notion, Dr. Moggy Graham, (laughs) thanks so much. I couldn't agree with you more. Blessings to you today, and thanks very much. And we hope that champs will, and and all Jamaican schools will adopt what is that unimpeachable principle. I'll catch you another time to have a chat with you off, mate. And okay, thanks so good. much. Would, would appreciate that. Yeah, yes, man, because that, believe me, I know some country picnic would no, never it. make it if they never have well, a chance to come to town. And well. they wouldn't make it either many if they never had the chance to go the, to a this, good school. This, this <laughs> talk, Look at those and they come in their neighbors. This talk what kind is done. the mission of our school? I got to leave you. All thanks right, so much brother. for your company. Right. Good. I and thanks you. to right. Lafayne, to Jeff, to uh, Sean, to everybody who has made today's public eye possible. Thanks to you, Erwin Clare. Yes. You said with us the whole I'm time. I'm yes. hungry. <laughs> Good. And the Honorable Pernell Charles, the redoubtable gentleman, we're grateful for his company. Till next time, where we link the diaspora and the local people with the concerns of the Jamaican soul. This is the public eye on the bridge, 99FM.